glad that you're uh, here today. Um, Senator Jack Hill is uh, going to join me as well to, to answer a few questions. Uh, he's got to get back because in about 30 minutes, uh, the Senate Appropriations Committee will take up the 2011 budget. And uh, the words that all of the legislators have been looking for, I can finally utter, and that is, the end is near. <laughs> uh, as we uh, look to culminate the, the longest, what I'm told is the longest session in the history of the state of Georgia. Uh, so we uh, will are expected to pass the, uh, the 2011 budget out of the Appropriations Committee today. Uh, it would be eligible to be on the floor tomorrow. And of course, then conference will, will happen, and hopefully we'll, we'll have this done by day 39 at the latest. So uh, what has been a long and very painful process is, is moving towards finality. And uh, Senator Hill and our entire uh, Senate budget, budget Office deserve an enormous amount of credit for taking on a, what could only be described as a Herculean task of, of balancing a budget uh, during these tough economic times. And. Um, I can't say enough about, about what they've been able to accomplish. This has uh, truly been a team effort. Uh, no one has been left unscathed. Everybody has, has been hit a little bit. Uh, but we believe it's, uh, it, it's a great piece of legislation uh, as far as balancing the interests of the state and what the state needs to do uh, with these very limited resources. Uh, other than that, I don't know of any other major controversial issues that will be on this, the Senate floor over the next couple of days. Of course, we're in session today and tomorrow, and then uh, we'll be out to, to begin conferencing for the budget next week. Uh, so uh, with that, I will answer any questions, and Senator Hill is with me as well, and you can ask him a few questions. <coughs> Actually, Jack, if you'd like to yeah. make a couple comments. Well, we will take up the amended budget today on the floor. Some of you were there yesterday when we settled that uh, with the House. So we'll try to get that out of the way today and then um, have the uh, 011 on the floor tomorrow. Hope to get to conference and uh, see if we can get it settled. There's really <coughs> no, really too many great differences between the House version and the Senate version. We we restored some funds in, in Medicaid uh, that we thought were a hole that needed to be filled, and slight no real difference in K-12 and a slight slight increase in uh, higher ed. So those are kind of the highlights. So other than that, I mean, there's no virtually no new funds for anybody other than behavioral health. The 50 million or so that the uh, 42 or so that the governor recommended is is in there for uh, mental hospitals. There's a, there's a bond package that you know we took part of what the governor had and part of what the house had done, and we added a few projects. But we're operating off the the limited uh, 900 million dollar total bond package, so we did not change that. So uh, it'll be a short list of highlights, maybe some lowlights, but no highlights much. Senator, what is I think it's uh, 140 million or so, Carolyn. 140, give or take, two or three million. I think we're about 13 higher than the house. House was 117, about 130. About 130. It's era funds in there, and so it's always confusing when you the cut is not really the cut if you take off the era, the stimulus funds, but the um, the the cuts of you know draconian cuts did did not happen. Those are essentially the, the it, essentially it's a cut of the growth funds. The new funds they would have gotten, they won't get, and there's a little bit of cut beyond that. But that's essentially, they're basically, for all practical purposes, they're essentially flat. Anything about any estimate on tuition increase? I, I really that's don't know how to answer that. That's up to the regents. That'd be up to the regents. Uh, they, should, they, they should have all the tools they need to handle, handle this cut. And, Meet this reduction. A lot of attention in the last few days, particularly yesterday, to the Capitol over uh, cutting out funding for the Georgia Council for the Arts. It's the first I've heard of that. Is that still out? Yeah, you would forward you to all the emails I got. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> what about that? We restored the, um, the funding, the, the, the federal match funding, basically the governor's position that, that he had, and uh, hope the House will go along with us. We think that's a. It's, it, it, in, in some ways, it may be hard to defend funding for the arts, but it's a good deal for the state in, in matching up with the federal funds. And my experience has been those funds go into this grassroots arts program, which goes directly out to communities all over the state. So there's no, none of the administration funds come out of that amount. So, you know, I can defend that as a, as a good expenditure. 
What did I'm just not familiar with the program. How much was it was not covered under a match? Was there a reduction in the program overall? Not a couple million. million or so. So, uh, uh, Senator Rogers, you said that uh, there'd be no major controversial issues over the next couple of days, and that's, that's 38 and 39. So does that mean that transportation arises on the 40th day as it has the last two years as the big? Well, I think we're looking at day 37 and 38, correct? 37, 38. Today's 37, tomorrow's 38. So for this week, and then next week is 39 and 40. What about transportation? Sorry. That, I, we don't mind you getting ahead of yourself. We're ready to get, get, get ahead of ourselves. Where, where does that stand? Uh, the, the, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not on the conference committee. My understanding is they have been meeting uh, multiple times to, to iron out a deal. And uh, I, I don't have any update on, on progress on that issue. Okay. 